So, hello. Um, I'm really excited to see so many of you here. Um, it's, it's a big pleasure and honor to me to, to be here in front of you. Uh, today I'd like to talk about Bitrue indexes. I'd like to tell a lot about them. And uh, let's, let's get started. Uh, actually, there are several r different reasons why am I going to do this presentation. At first, I work a lot with Bitrue indexes and then I'd like to tell you about its internals. I think it will be useful for both, for users who will understand a bit more about maintaining indexes efficiently, and for developers who will, uh, who will, I think, will be a bit more enthusiastic to help me with patches. I sincerely hope. Uh, that leads straight to the next point. I'm going to present two new features and a couple of ideas about future development. Uh, unfortunately, these features are not ready for 9.6 release, but I, I sincerely hope we will see them in next one. Um, next thing I want to do there is I'd like to discuss some difficulties of, devel of development. Of course, they're not specific only to B3 indexes, but I think it's uh, a question we should, we should uh, pay attention to it, I think. And uh, at last, I hope after this conference we will have more clear vision of the future of B2 indexes, of this roadmap, and we will not spend, we will not waste a lot of time just discussing it, but we will spend our efforts for implementa implementation and for improving things. Uh, you can find this the same presentation on SlideShare by this link if you want, if it's more com comfortable for you. So, first of all, I'd like to remind briefly some important n notes, some important things about indexes in PostgreSQL. Uh, all indexes are secondary now. It means that the index file is separated from the table file uh, that it describes. Um, all index files are divided into standard page, into standard pages. Uh, the layout of a page is uh, defined by access method, which is B3 for this presentation. Uh, indexes stores uh, tuple identifiers, uh, which is actually which are pointers to the heap tuples and uh, the keys. Mm, there is no visibility information in indexes, but we have a couple of tricks to avoid unnecessary access to the heap. We have visibility map and uh, LP dead flags to avoid uh, some rechecks, some extra checks. Uh, dead tuples are removed with vacuum and uh, Every new update is actually insertion of new row to the index, except hot updates, which I'll discuss a bit later. Um, there is, again, no, nothing special on this slide, just basic structure of B3. Uh, B stands for balance tree. Actually, uh, in Postgres, it's not just B3, it's B plus tree, which means that uh, Actual keys are stored only on leaf nodes and root and inner nodes uh, contain duplicates of these keys and points to the lower levels. And uh, of course, all keys are sorted inside the node. Uh, current PostgreSQL B3 implementation is based on Lehman and Yao high concurrency B3 uh, algorithm. It has different uh, additions to, cl to a classic B-tree algorithm. Uh, first one is that uh, it adds a right link pointer uh, to the page's right sibling. It's used to do forward index scan when we follow this link to read next page. And also it's critical for recovery of concurrent page, concurrent page splits and uh, deletions and uh, there's a lot of complicated uh, locking considerations here. Uh, another thing uh, is a high key which is added to each page. 
Uh, it is an upper bond of the keys that are allowed on, on this page. Uh, and um, also, uh, this algorithm has some assumptions. Some of them are true for PostgreSQL indexes, some of them are not. Um, we assume that we can fit at least three items on a page uh, where one is a high key and two other are real keys. It is these assumptions help us to ensure that our tree is, is a real tree, not just a linked list. Uh, next assumption is that all the tree keys are unique. It's, it's not true for PostgreSQL, of course. Uh, next one is about fixed size. Uh, and the last one about uh, that all pages are unshared in memory. Uh, these three assumptions are made for, make for having algorithm easier, but in Postgres, in real world, uh, things are a bit more complicated. And I'd like to describe, I'd like to explain how this is done in Postgres. So, uh, major ideas of Limanayao algorithm are implemented unchanged. We have both right links and high keys, but in addition to right links, we also have left link, uh, which is used to do backward index scans. Uh, next point is about assumption of unique keys. Even unique between index, uh, which is unique index or primary key, can have non-unique keys because of MVCC. And um, the very first implementation of b in Postgres had an additional attribute to each, uh, to each index tuple, which guaranteed to be unique. Uh, it was, it added some overhead and since version 7.1, we do not have it. Uh, we use uh, we just use link link field to disambiguate multiple occurrences of the of the tuples. Uh, another thing about non-unique keys is that when we look in in the tree, uh, we should when we found actually equal key in some inner node, we should check left subtree. Uh, not just go straight down to the link, but we should check left subtree to ensure that there are no equal keys on this page. It complicates algorithm a bit. It complicates the code. Um, next thing is uh, that the same concern is, um, is essential for insertions. When we are doing insertion, we may have several pages with the same with equal keys. And uh, at first, we are trying, before splitting the page, we are trying to find the page with enough, equal, uh, with enough free space for our tuple. We're just trying to go right to the next page and find a room for our tuple. That uh, leads that tuples are actually not ordered by tuple ID on a page. Uh, this is not so important for any, any user experience, but it, uh, it makes, it, it differs some, uh, something for hackers, for developers. Another thing is that we have variable size keys, of course, not everything is fixed size. Uh, so uh, maximum number of index tuples on a page is not fixed as well, it is just, uh, computed with the uh, with macro. Uh, and uh, wh when we do a split of a page, we're just trying to equalize not the number of tuples, but uh, the number of bytes on each uh, page. And the last point that actually pages are shared, they're in shared buffers, and we still need to uh, read uh, page page level read locking uh, to avoid changes on a page we are reading right now. Internal structure of B3 is following every 
every B3, uh, page zero is a meta page. Its layout differs from other pages layout. It only has one structure which contains metadata. Uh, it actually has information about layout version, about root location and about number of levels in the tree. Uh, one more interesting thing that levels are numerated from leaf to root. It makes addition of new level much easier. We haven't to re renumerate all the pages. Uh, all other B3 pages have almost standard layout. Uh, as well as heap pages, they have page header at the beginning followed by array of item pointers which are slots. Uh, and uh, they are point to the keys which are actually inserted onto the page from its end. Uh, and there is also B3 specific information at the end of the page. It has, uh, it contains, it contained in a structure called BT page APEC data. Uh, it has some flags, uh, it has links to the next and previous page to the siblings and uh, also it points out whether this page is a meta page or leaf page or anything else. Uh, there are also flags to to say whether we have garbage on our page or anything else. Uh, now I'm going to tell a bit uh, to to show a bit retrospective about uh, B3 features. The first implementation was not so complicated as we have it now and almost each release added something very, very essential to B3. Um, so B3 exists in Postgresql since the very beginning. It's B3 based uh, DBMS so um, we have them from the very beginning, but there were, there were plenty of changes since that time. First of all, B3 provides support of unique indexes and uh, primary key constraints. It is default index time type for these constraints. And um, so it's, it's very wide, widely used in almost every database. Uh, next thing is system and toast indexes are also B3. Even if you have no one B3 index, you already have. Uh, you already have about 100 of indexes on system catalog. And uh, actually, that's, a bit, that's one of the reasons why B3 development is so complicated. We do not want to break everything, uh, including system catalog and toast with, with just improving B3 indexes. You know, it, it's a bit hard to debug, it's a bit hard to, to cope with it. Um, another very, very, very nice feature of B3 indexes is uh, fast index creation. We use uh, tuple sort to sort given tuples. Uh, then we load them into leaf level pages and build uh, B3 from bottom, from the bottom up. Uh, there is a trick with high keys because when we load our tuples onto the page, we still do not know which is the highest one. We have to do some some tricky re repack of the page. Uh, it adds compl complicity to to development, really. Uh, next thing is multi-column B3 indexes. Uh, they are presented in Postgres since version 9, oh sorry, 6.1, but the maximum number of columns allowed were changed several times. Uh, it was 8, then 16, and now it's uh, 32. Multiple keys are stored in a single tuple not in separate subtrees as it's done, for example, in gene indexes. It's, it's mostly, I think, for historical reasons, has some historical reasons, but uh, it's one of the reasons why we should support both 
B3 and gene indexes, they are good for separate, for separate use cases, for different use cases. So um, not B3 can replace B3 gene, not the other one. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this feature about expressional B3 indexes exists in PostgreSQL since the very beginning. Uh, they are really useful for queries that match on some function or modification of data. Uh, and actually, there is already a lot of information about expressional indexes, and it has nothing specific to B3 access method. So I think I'm not going to stop here more. Uh, let's go further. Uh, another useful feature is the partial indexes, which allow to cover just a subset of a data, of a table data. They are presented since 7.2, and it's also not specific for B3. It's uh, mostly supported by Planner, so I will not discuss it here in details. Let's look now at different improvements of algorithm that allow us to speed up between indexes, not uh, just user features, but some internal things. Uh, on the fly deletion, which is also known as micro vacuum, is very useful to avoid uh, extra page splits and index bloating when it's possible. And it also speeds up uh, plain vacuum. Uh, it works as following. When we read index keys and recheck their, uh, their visibility in a table, we can find tuples which are already unvisible in all transactions. And uh, we know that they're unvisible, we can mark them as dead in our index page uh, using LP dead flag, flag which is actually hint bit, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, and after that, when we want to <coughs> insert a new key on a page, if it is, if there is not enough room on a page, we're first trying to uh, remove garbage from the, from the page and uh, remove dead apples. And if there is a room now, we can avoid page split. It's very, it speeds up uh, performance for, for some use cases very well. Uh, next feature is hot updates, which are heap only tuples, actually. Uh, this feature eliminates redundant index entries. Uh, it's, it's very nice to explain it with example. Imagine we want to update a row in index table. It means we also must insert new entry into the index. Uh, for example, if we want to update a row, we want to update uh, some indexed field, we should uh, insert the new entry into the index. But if we do not change well, of indexed column, new index center will be redundant. There is no need to have it in index. So we can just do hot update, add new tuple only to the heap, and then link it to the previous version of the tuple. This structure is called hot chain, and it allows us to decrease index, si index size significantly, actually. Another feature to improve search performance is an index-only scan, which allows queries to catch data from the index, avoiding heap access. Uh, it uses visibility map to check that all tuples on a page are visible to each, each transaction. And if it's so, we cannot recheck, we can avoid recheck in a heap and just, uh, just send data further. So, any questions for, for now? Uh, yeah? Um, so you mentioned that multi column indexes started out supporting eight columns and then went up. Um, but that seems like a crazy number of columns to me. Um, do you think of a use case for that many? Uh, you, they usually don't see more than two being useful. I've had up to six. <laughs> I tried to do just a four more. 
Oh, okay, I think I should repeat the question. There is a question of why do we need so many columns in, in index at all? Oh, 32 looks pretty, pretty much. And uh, an answer was that no, nobody, I think, knows the use case, the real use case, but, but we can <laughs> if someone needs it. Maybe. So, in the next part of my presentation, I'd like to uh, talk about new features uh, about patches I wrote. Uh, and uh, the first one is covering indexes. Uh, I'll try to explain why do we need it, and then I'll say a couple of words about implementation. Uh, imagine an example when we want, when we need a unique index on our table. It's maybe primary key or we just need uniqueness. And uh, we also want to have uh, to have uh, ability of index analyst scan to, to make our search queries faster. And then we create covering index on the same table. It, it seems pretty... Mm, Pretty strange to have so many duplicated data. It's uh, it's it's not uh, the b the best solution, but it was so. And for now, we can have just one index uh, with included included columns, uh, which is unique on key columns, and other are just included in index to uh, to use index only scan on them. Uh, this approach. Uh, seems very very nice, and it uh, I think it will be useful for many for many use cases. Uh, let's look at the syntax. Uh, keyword including allows to specify a portion of columns which uh, on which the unique uniqueness is not enforced upon. Actually, you can have non-unique index with included included columns, but sincerely, I don't know why someone needs it. Um, so, so would, just, would that make the index exactly the same as if you just made it all yeah. columns? Like, there's it's, no difference then. It, it's almost, there is a bit different uh, because uh, we do not store included columns in internal pages. So it will have a little bit uh, smaller size. Okay. We okay. truncate tuples just to store key columns in non-leaf pages. Because we don't need them. Okay, so I have a question. Do you, if you have this including column, do you still store that in order? Uh, no, we, we just uh, don't have a class for them. We just uh, decided that it will be unnecessary and we uh, but it allows us to add into B3 uh, some data types which have no suitable up class. It's, it has its pros and cons, but it's done this way. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so, uh, also we can create constraint uh, with including with included columns uh, right f using just very simple syntax you can see that without uh, without uh, this feature we we already could do that we can create index then alter table 
uh, to add constraint which use this index, but uh, new syntax make it just a bit simpler. So uh, in order to keep information about key and include attributes, uh, I have to add new column to system catalog table pg class uh, int and key attributes, which uh, points out uh, how many key attributes we have. Uh, and I think some refactoring is required now because int key column is, is not actually key. Uh, it is everything that is in index uh, and name is a bit confusing. Um, it also added new column in PG constraint catalog. At the beginning, I thought that, that it is unnecessary that row in PG class is enough, but tracking dependencies doesn't work as, as appropriate. Uh, and so we need uh, this column con including to track dependencies. So when we remove uh, a column which is included to our index, we should remove index as well, cascade. Um, so there is some conclusion of this feature. Uh, so what's good? Index maintenance or had decreased. We can have one index instead of two. It's, it's really good. Uh, inserts are faster as well. Um, index can, can, can contain data with no suitable up class, so we can put box or, or everything at all into B3, and it's nice. Uh, but we should, we have to do a filter on it, not just using it in scan key. Any column deletion leads to index deletion. It's worth to, to know it. Uh, and hot updates, of course, they do not work for index data. So you should still, uh, you should still keep in mind that included, you should not include everything into your index because if you have a lot of updates, maybe it will be better to have them hot updates uh, and then do some rechecking in table. Uh, but if there is not a lot of updates or, uh, or deletes, you can include some columns into your, into your index to, yeah, to have. Yeah, of course, yeah. but I mean that included columns, they are in index now. They were not in index, but now they are indexed and you, you should be very careful about it. You should not put everything into index just, just because you can. Yeah. Uh, next feature I want to talk about is effective storage of duplicates. It's actually the feature that we already have in gene indexes and it is and it works really really well uh, and uh, i just ported the same the same feature to b3 indexes since they are widely used and if we have b3 index with a lot of duplicated keys on th on the same page we do not want to store the same key every time we can st store we can have this key just once and then uh, set a list of pointers to the heap tuples. Um, I think that idea is pretty easy. We can also do some compression of posting list. It is not implemented yet, but it will allow us to decrease, uh, to decrease size even more. There are some results of such compression. You can see number of distant queries indexed uh, and uh, because uh, impl implementation differs a bit, uh, it works the same if we have no duplicates. Uh, with the same with B3, it has the same size. Uh, but if we have some duplicates, it is about two times smaller, which is which is pretty good. I think there is no actually absolutely unique data uh, in our world. We have MVCC copies as well. Uh, and also bit region with no duplicates is pr pretty big. There are some results of 
speed uh, of index creation. You can see that index creation of that creation of compressed index is not uh, slower. It is not faster as well, but it's still the same. Uh, while we treat genes, some why actually I do not I do not know why it's so. It's uh, slower uh, on this this case, uh, but I think that parallel gene index build will do it a bit a bit better, much better. I think yeah. Um, so, any questions about features so far? Um, no? <laughs> Everyone is so excited or, yeah, or yeah. what? <laughs> uh, so, that's, that's very good, but these features are not in Postgres yet. Uh, and I want to say some, some words about difficulties of development. As I already said, the code is pretty complicated. It's have, it, it is not just implementation of Betray algorithm. It has a lot of minor and major improvements for, uh, for performance issues. Uh, as well, it's a crucial subsystem. And uh, we had some, some bad experience last in, in previous uh, years, so I, I just looked at repository and I found that we have some patches and some of them were rejected and no one tried else. Uh, so maybe maybe we should cope with it. Maybe we should forget about that bad experience and try something new again <laughs> and, and break everything and, and so on and so on. Uh, but some why there are few active developers and experts in this area. Actually, I don't advise it. Uh, maybe because B3 was pretty good subsystem and we, uh, and we think more about other subsystems which are not so good, but now I think it's time to change B3. Uh, and I, I need more help actually. I'm, I'm not so, I'm not an expert in this area, I need more help. Uh, and the last thing is that there are few instruments for developers. Uh, it's, it's not about B3 only, of course, again, uh, but it's really hard to debug it. It's really hard to understand what, what is inside the code. It's, it's hard to uh, involve into development for new, for newbies, for beginners. Mm. So, but there are still a couple of extensions that are very helpful for, for developers. One of them is Page Inspect, which, which is very useful, which is awesome, uh, that, that helps a lot when you develop anything that is uh, related to access method. You can see B3 page stats for your index, which is actually uh, the information stored in a uh, special field for B3 index, which is specific to B3. You can find uh, a link to the next page. You can see a link to the previous page, uh, some other handy information. Uh, you can also just, ex uh, just watch uh, what items are stored in index. Uh, it is also really interesting to w when you're doing some debug. Uh, and uh, this is another query uh, that shows uh, that just, just two first uh, items of each page in, in this very little index. And it's uh, it very helpful to debug. You can find out whether you have some problems, whether uh, keys are sorted right, whether they're uh, truncated correctly, and so on. Uh, but uh, it, it's not always uh, really nice to do it um, manually. And we have another incredible instrument to do that is AM check. Uh, it is pretty, pretty good uh, concrete module. I think I must, uh, I must to say sorry <laughs> uh, that I a bit uh, 
I was a bit not too active uh, reviewing it, uh, so we still haven't it in Postgres, but thanks to Peter Gagin, we can use this contrib already. It's not to be contrib module, it's about 2,000 rows, including documentation and so on, uh, and it's very, I think it's very uh, interesting to read if you want to involve in this area. If you want to understand what B3 does, uh, you can read this module and you will have some, some idea. Uh, what, is, what does it do actually? It provides functions that allow you to verify the logical consistency of B3 structure. Uh, it is very useful for, for users uh, and uh, of course for developers. Um, now there are only two functions. One of them checks that all tupper, tuples on the pages are sorted as, as appropriate, and another checks that uh, leaf nodes and uh, inner and root and parent nodes are consistent. So I think that's all that we have for between indexes for now. Uh, maybe someone has uh, additions, maybe someone has questions so far. No? When I, when I was hacking on the while login, between indexes a few years or two ago, I, I wrote some scripts, it wasn't ready to, it's not a ready made tool, but I wrote some scripts yeah. to dump the layout of the indexes. Mm -hmm. I have to grab these scripts that actually generates a Oh, picture of that. Th that's great. That was really helpful to see where it went wrong. Uh, can, can we find it somewhere? I, I don't remember. <laughs> I, might, I, might have, I might have had copies on the I don't remember. Um, I, I think it's just it, it discussion. It's very difficult to use because if you have this index of any size, that, that picture that contains every page and every item is become quite large. Uh, so so I, I think I had to hack the code and so forth to generate that and to filter it into just the, the specific test case I was trying to find. So oh. something like that would be useful. That's nice. Uh, so, and a couple of words about future, about what do we need, actually about what <coughs> users need, about what developers should think about. First is index compression. Smaller is better, it's, it's obvious for databases. Uh, there are different ways to reach that. Uh, first is mm, effective layout. I told about it already. Uh, next is compression of the first column in multi-column indexes. It can contain a lot of repeated values, so maybe it will be useful to do some uh, approach, so, some patch for that. And uh, the next thing is page compression. This is actually what I'm going to work on in the nearest future, uh, is some, uh, some data-independent page compression for Postgres. Next uh, thing that, are, that is always uh, required, that is always asked by users is index organized tables or primary indexes. Actually, I don't see any reasons for not having them besides, besides lack of developers, besides lack of time. Uh, users do not want to store data twice, it's, it's obvious. Um, and I think it's, it's real to do, but, but we need more people. Uh, next thing is can and search for B3. It's, it's nice and easy task for beginners, I think. Uh, I think it's not too complicated, but it, it requires to understand b code, so I think it's a good point to start. Um, I, I do not suggest you to start with index organized tables or something so, so hard, but if there are any students maybe for Google Summer of Code or anything like that, I'm ready to uh, mentoring to help them, of course, with this or, or any other tasks in this area. I think it will be very, very good to have new developers um, who are interested in this area. Next idea is a batch update of indexes. Um, 
we need to answer a question how to live with B3 under a heavy write load. We do need B3 index, but we do need heavy write load and, and it's a bit painful, I think, for now. Yeah? Um, is that just, um, is that a ge general feature you want to add to B3 where you buffer inserts in memory and add them batch process or is this like for data loads for because um, there's like PG loader or something like that. No, I mean uh, really uh, online uh, load when we have a lot of insertions and we need to uh, support maybe primary key, a lot of keys on, on our tables and we have a lot of insertions maybe we can we can implement some bufferization here. Uh, there there is already a discussion about alter index, about some kind of partitioning for indexes in mailing list, but I I don't think it have it has anything uh, to to, um, to commit yet. Uh, I think we should uh, look at this more more attentively. It is really interesting use case and it really a good field to improve things. And the last point is indexes on partition tables. PG Partman opens Partman opens new era of partitioning. We work on it a lot. And as well it it provides new challenges for B3. Uh, most important and most complicated of which is a global index for all partitions. And it will be really big project, I think. And I'm not ready to work on it and I don't think any, anyone maybe. Uh, I'd like to see volunteers. Yeah? Um, I, I have something that you might want to add to the list is that with a B-tree index, if all but a few or maybe all but one of the uh, index tuples per page get deleted, yeah. you can get a really pathological bloat in a B tree index. And I did come up with a design for combining sparse pages that I meant I've been meaning to, to talk to you about. So oh, yeah. you, you might want to add that to a list and get back to me. If yeah, that, that's a good addition. Actually, I started this presentation to get more uh, user uh, user experience to understand what do we need to do else, what do we need to add in our to-do list, and also I'd like to find any volunteers who are ready to work on it because uh, for now there are a couple of people maybe, and it's it's a bit it's it's too few to for such a big projects. So actually that is all. If anyone has ideas how we can improve B3, if anyone have has questions about this presentation, I'm, I'm ready to answer. Yeah. So, thank you.